If you don't like laptops that look like their gaming hardware, stop watching this video right away. Do something else. For example, read a book, buy a Mac. I am kidding, don't buy a Mac. If you don't know what to do with your money, give it to charity instead or save it for like the second corona wave. For the rest of you, enjoy the video. Hey, my name is Hubwood and this laptop is the fastest gaming laptop in its price category which is available right now. You could call it the RX 570 of gaming laptops. And no, I don't count the Dell G5 SE because it's just not available right now. At least yet, like anywhere. Well, we are talking about the Asus TUF A15 in a variant with a brand new Ryzen 7 4800H 8-core processor a GTX 1660 Ti, a fast 500GB Kingston NVMe SSD, a 144Hz display IPS with adaptive sync. That's great. And um, yeah, unfortunately only 8GB of DDR4 RAM in this case. At least it's 3200MHz RAM. But we'll talk about this later. PS, this version does not include Windows 10 which usually saves you around 70 to $100, so you could install it yourself by picking up a key from eBay for $10 or whatever and save some money, if you are capable of doing this yourself, of course. By the way, as usual, this model comes in a lot of variants, including one with a RTX 2060, which I couldn't lay my hands on when testing this, but yeah, it's supposed to be the same price even, um, as the version with the 1660 Ti. And there are versions with bigger RAM and um, a bigger battery, as well as 17 inch versions of this laptop, but that's called the A17 then. I have to admit that when I was unpacking this laptop, I was like, okay, it's gonna be fast and all, but I guess it's not that great in other terms like keyboard and stuff. Boy, was I wrong. What the? Well, the Asus TUF series is considered by many as the cheap and trashy gaming series by Asus, but this refresh is different. Because aside from its great value and the amazing FPS per dollar ratio, it has some other strong points as well, on which we will take a closer look right now. Yes, okay, the chassis and the whole laptop is made of plastic and it kind of looks like it was made for gamers, which to be fair, it was, that's its purpose. But that doesn't mean that we have a big ugly chunk in front of us. It only weighs 2.3 kilograms, which it's great to handle. So you could even take it to university or wherever. Um, and it's only 2.3 millimeters or around 0.9 inches high. So that's kind of okay. You can open the monitor with one hand and it looks like it's kind of made very sturdy, which I really like. Well, the display itself won't win any awards, but I think that the maximum brightness of around 285 nits is still acceptable. Um, but this laptop wasn't made for creative professionals anyway, which doesn't mean that you cannot use Photoshop or stuff like Adobe Premiere. It's quite the opposite. Since the Ryzen CPU is so fast, it's actually capable of editing 4K footage without any problems. And of course, you could always attach a better monitor if you like. And the amazing thing is that we are looking at a 144Hz monitor with adaptive sync, which is really great. I, I am using this with my personal monitor at home for years now and I seriously don't want to miss it because gaming just gets so much smoother and feels better if you're getting used to this because I personally think that 40 FPS on such a screen look better than 50 FPS on a regular 60Hz screen with a fixed um, frequency. And something else that I did not expect to be that good is the keyboard. It's just really good. I like it a lot. I mean, it's sturdy, it feels nice, writing was fun. The only thing that I didn't like that much was the very small enter key. but. 
you can get used to this, I guess. And it has RGB, right? Well, I like it. The Windows Precision touchpad is okay. It works as intended, but the two separated mouse keys are kind of rickety, so I use the touchpad's touch function instead. But well, I guess as a gamer you intend to use a halfway decent regular mouse anyway, so I'm okay with it. And by the way, this is what the integrated camera looks and sounds like. The speakers could be a bit louder, but they are very clear and they even have some bass, which I did not expect in um, a gaming laptop's category at this price point, to be honest. But because of the fan noise and the load, you probably would use a headset anyway, as it kind of gets quite loud. Again, I did have louder laptops than this, but um, yeah, some of you might consider it too loud, even though I don't think it's a catastrophe. And I have to point out that um, at idle mode and doing light stuff, you don't hear the fans at all. But hey, at the given performance and the price point, I'm actually pretty okay with this. The cooling system providing two fans and three heat pipes results in a GPU temperature of around 77 to 82 degrees and a CPU temperature of up to 95 um, degrees Celsius. I know that sounds quite warm, but I never experienced thermal throttling at a room temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. By the way, the keyboard actually never gets warm when gaming, which I didn't expect as well. It's just nice and comfortable all the time. Now, before we talk about the performance of this machine, let's have a look at the connections. On the right side, we do have a USB 2 port only and um, a Kensington lock, which I really like. I, I like that they didn't use the power plug over here, which gets in the way with the mouse or the heat output. Just, just makes sense this way. On the left side, we do have a LAN port, the power connector, an HDMI port, two USB 3 ports, a USB-C type port and a headphone jack. And in my opinion, this layout just makes sense and it's just the regular layout and connection that you get um, for a laptop this price point. So I'm just fine with this. PS, there's no micro SD or SD card slot. The battery time for this version that I have here with a 48 watt hour battery is about 3.5 to 4 hours watching Netflix or YouTube via browser depending on your brightness, if you use LAN or Wi-Fi, um, if you do other stuff as well, it depends. The same goes for working, it's about 3.5 to, 3, 3 to 4.5 or even up to 5 hours if you ramp down the brightness depending on if you listen to music while you do it, what exactly you're doing. It basically depends on how much you utilize the CPU. When I was playing Red Dead Redemption without the laptop being plugged in, so on battery mode, it shut down after around 15 minutes. But I have to say that also the performance suffers a lot from using it in battery mode. You only get around one third of the performance that you have when it's plugged in. So keep that in mind. If gaming on the go without cable is important to you, you will lose a lot of uh, performance. By the way, you can charge the battery by around 40% after 30 minutes and around 70% after an hour. Oh, and the power supply is a 180 watt power supply, but the maximum that I measured when gaming was around 150 watts from the wall. There is a 90 watt hour battery version of this laptop, which um, will double the times that I've just told you, but you will also lose the possibility to install a 2.5 inch HDD, which by the way needs an adapter cable, which was not included. Come on. Now let's have a look at the performance of this machine, shall we? Now the 512GB SSD by Kingston reaches almost 1GB of writing speed and 1.5GB of reading speed at a usage of around 80%, which lets your system boot up in 20 seconds and all programs open within no time. The difference to the even faster SSDs on the market can only be measured and not be felt in my personal opinion, and you have the option to easily install a second M2 SSD by the way opening the laptop is quite easy. The Ryzen 7 achieves around 1830 points in Cinebench R15 in the first run and around 1775 in the following runs, which is normal for laptops, because once the boost clock and temperature reach their load level, this is just the way that it is. 
In Cinebench R20 it's around 4200 to 4300 points in the first run and around 4000 points after a while. So the multi-core performance of this laptop is way above an Intel i7 8700K's performance, which was the basically the best gaming CPU that was available uh, for a long time. This is amazing what AMD achieved with this mobile CPU with the 8 core 16 threads with only using about 45 watts. That's just amazing. I mean this CPU is one of the fastest laptop CPUs available to this date. And if in the future this GPU becomes too slow to play newer games, you can still use this laptop for daily tasks for a long time. I just predict around at least 10 years or even more, you will be able to do 4K video editing, even rendering or auto cut stuff like this and daily usage, no problem at all. And let me tell you that the even cheaper Ryzen 5 versions of this laptop will provide enough gaming power for all the games out there without any doubt the 6 core 12 threads the only thing the only difference is that the multi core performance will be a bit lower for editing and stuff but yeah if that's not important to you you might go for the Ryzen 5 version and save some bugs which you could directly put into more ram or more ssd space a bigger ssd a second ssd whatever yeah just go for this then well, in 3D Mark Firestrike, we were achieving very good 13,000 points with a graphics score of 14,500 and a physics score of great 20,500. When we overclock the GPU, the overall score goes up to 13,900. TimeSpy scored around 5,500 points with a graphics score of 5,250 points and a CPU score of 7,470. And overclocking gave an overall time spy score of almost 6000 points. Now here comes the biggest downer for me. This laptop only has 8GB of single channel RAM. This means that the gaming performance of almost all games will be like 10% slower as it would be with dual channel. The, I, I guess they made this to, to keep the price down, especially for this version. In most cases the gaming performance is still good and you can play all the games out there with 8 gigabytes but in the future this won't be enough. To be fair right now it's not enough if you want to play for example Call of Duty Warzone you can play the game but you won't be having any fun because there will be stuttering just before firefights. I have a video about that check it out and some games they start to demand more than 8 gigabytes. But I have to say that um, even Red Dead Redemption 2 which is supposed to run with 12 or 16 gigabytes ran actually pretty well and I didn't have any issues with stuttering or frame times. But my recommendation would be to just spend another $50 on another 8 gigabyte RAM stick, put that in there and um, enjoy the dual channel RAM um, speed. Yeah. But that's just my suggestion. So let's have a look at the gaming performance, shall we? Now before I start, all games were tested on Full HD and the footage you will see was recorded on the laptop using Shadowplay. So I ran Remedies Control on the highest possible settings except for ray tracing of course and saw an average of 47 FPS and a 1% low of 36 FPS. It was perfectly playable and as I stated before, 46 FPS on a Adaptive Sync screen are just perfectly fine. The game looks awesome and felt fluid all the time. Next up was Battlefield 5, which I've tested on a 64 player conquest map on medium settings resulting in a perfectly playable average of 63 FPS and a 1% low of 34 FPS. Battlefield 5 is kind of a pain in the ass when it comes to lagging, stuttering and frame time issues, but it ran perfectly most of the time. I recommend installing it on an SSD though. For Red Dead Redemption 2, I used a mix of medium, high and ultra settings to make the game look great and fluid. With that I saw an average of great 52 FPS, even though I only had 8GB of RAM of course, and it didn't even stutter in Saint Denis. The 1% low was a very acceptable 38 FPS. PUBG ran smooth as well on high settings, with an average of 70 FPS and a 1% low of 41. No complaints here. The game is finally in a state which I would call well optimized, 
but we all know they took their time. The Witcher 3 was up next and ran with an average of 70 FPS on high settings as well. I just love the game so much and I have to test it with kind of every system I lay my hands on. And I mean every system. By the way, the 1% low was a great 45 FPS. And now look at that. Half-Life Alex. Yeah, it worked pretty well. I used low settings and the 72Hz screen of my Oculus Quest was getting 72 FPS almost all the time. The GPU was usually running at about 75-80% to and the CPU was pretty bored to be honest. But I actually had to connect to the Oculus Quest wireless via doing some preparations with some tools and stuff because the laptop's USB 3 ports didn't seem to work with the Oculus Link cable that I have. I don't know if this problem won't appear on the Valve Index, the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift though. But the experience was very good overall, I didn't expect this at first. So as a conclusion, I really like and recommend this laptop. I love it if hardware has such a good value and price performance ratio like this. And especially gamers who can't or don't want to spend $2000 whatever they really get their money's worth in this case. If you're okay with the fact that this looks like it was made for gamers. Now, thank you for watching. I really appreciate any thumbs up and subs. See you next time. Thank you, bye bye and tschüss.